life is losing someone close to me, though I always associate this idea of losing someone with death. Now, I recently was faced with the realization that there are more ways that I could lose someone, not through death. Both of my grandfathers had suffered from Alzheimer's. One of them died when I was too naive to understand the disease, before the effects of Alzheimer's truly had the chance to take over him. However, now that I'm older, I found that I am now understanding and sadly fearing what may happen to my grandfather in the future. I remember when I first began to notice the disease start to kindle in his mind. At first, he began to forget small, miscellaneous things, like what he had for breakfast that morning. But those were just common things. Forgetting small things, you know, happens to everyone, right? I mean, maybe not as often as it was happening to him, but it was nothing to stress about. Except, eventually, those smaller things started to become more significant and harder for my family and I to ignore. For example, one day he called my dad frantic because he couldn't find my grandma, even though she had only left for the store about 20 minutes ago. When my grandma died of cancer about two years ago, my grandfather came to stay with us for the weekend. That's when those medium-sized, small things started to uh, grow into larger, more noticeable red flags of the disease. I remember every time he came to stay with us for the weekend, my mom and I would have to prep the house, labeling and marking everything, putting a sign on his bedroom, labeling it his bedroom, sign on mine, labeling it my room, and a sign on the bathroom, and so on. A house which was always like a second home to him, one that he had always known like the back of his hand, now became a mystery to him, forgotten as if he was seeing it for the first time in his life every time. I remember waking up one, more, one day to find my dad running outside to get my grandfather, who was, frank, who was running outside frantically in the middle of the night. I remember that night as if it was yesterday. Seeing him like that, the person who I'd always thought of as the strongest superhero in the world when I was little, was now so vulnerable. I remember really struggling to sleep that night and fear that, I might leave, that he might leave the house again and get in some serious danger. So instead of sleeping, I did what any normal person would do and sat on my phone. Instead of scrolling through TikTok or Instagram though, I decided to look up the disease on Google. I mean, I knew what Alzheimer's was, but I wanted to look more into it. This is the definition that I found. Alzheimer's is a progressive disease that destroys memory and other important mental functions. Destroys memory, meaning all the joyful memories that I had with him, teaching me how to dribble basketball, quizzing me on baseball players, challenging me to connect for and always losing to him, playing cards, improving my batting skills, all of them memories memories that I wanted him to hold on to forever would eventually, if not already, be lost forever. The special bond that we shared and developed through those memories over the course of my life would be gone. Those memories each held a piece of his identity. That's when I realized if all of those memories were gone, he'd be gone too. Dementia is a general term for decline in mental ability, severe enough to interfere with daily life. Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia. This is a picture of a normal human brain compared to someone who suffers from Alzheimer's. In this picture, there are three main differences. Um, one is the shrinkage visible in the hippocampus, an area of the brain that plays a key role in the formation of new memories. The next is in the ventricles here, which are, oh nope, it goes back, which are fluid uh, filled spaces in the brain. And the next is, the, in the cortex, which shrivels up, therefore damaging areas involved in planning, thinking, and remembering. Um, these damages to the brain caused by Alzheimer's significantly reduce life expectancy and are always fatal. Alzheimer's is the major cause of disability and dependency among older people worldwide and impacts all aspects of a person's life. It has physical impacts such as damaging the brain, psychological impacts, obviously the main one being memory loss, Social impacts including experiencing a range of emotions very quickly, such as grief, loss, anger, shock, fear, and disbelief. And economic impacts in terms of direct medical care costs and social care costs. Um, in 2015, the total global societal cost of dementia was estimated to be about 18, $818 billion, equivalent to 1.1% of the global, uh, global gross domestic product. All these impacts that only apply to people with dementia, but also on their carers, and there's families, as I expressed to you mine before. I have to admit, when I decided to do my TED Talk on Alzheimer's, I was pretty apprehensive at first. 
scared of what I may find, scared of that I wouldn't be able to emotionally handle getting the presentation. Although experiencing these impacts took a toll on me though, they also inspired me. Instead of just giving a depressing and sad presentation solely on the terrible effects of the disease, I instead wanted to take some time in my presentation to focus on a more positive aspect, how we could do our part in preventing ourselves from getting Alzheimer's. So one question about Alzheimer's that really became important for me was, is it hereditary? Now, obviously if it were hereditary, I guess my family and I would have a pretty high chance of getting it, since it is present on both sides of my family. Therefore, if getting Alzheimer's was truly a hereditary-based disease, there was really not much I would be able to do for, to prevent myself from getting it. However, when I researched this question, I thankfully found that Alzheimer's it can be genetically passed down, but scientists have discovered that the majority of the cases are not hereditary-based. Now, in rare types of dementia, there may be a stronger link. But these are only a portion of the overall cases of dementia. So now, let me repeat this. It is not hereditary. However, many, many people still believe that, the, that it is or consider it an inevitable aging disease and therefore feel that they don't need to change or do anything about their current lives in order to prevent it. That right there is the attitude and false belief that will keep the numbers of dementia cases increasing in the future. We need to make it a known fact that this disease is not completely hereditary and that way, that way make way more people could realize that they do have a fighting chance of preventing themselves as well as loved ones from getting this terrible and life-changing disease. So, what does cause and increase someone's chances of getting Alzheimer's? Well, recent research found that aspects such as diet may affect a person's chances. The food most strongly associated with this risk are sugary snacks, alcohol, processed meats, and starches. Not only diet, but living a healthy lifestyle overall will help decrease any chances of getting Alzheimer's. This includes getting enough sleep, eating less fats, not smoking, limiting alcohol consumption, as well as exercising. Now, when I say exercising, not only do I mean physically ex exercising, but mentally exercising as well. It has been scientifically proven that doing small exercises every day to help your memory, concent memory concentration and focus will result in a decrease in cognitive disability or dementia. So, what, ex what exercises does exercising your brain entail? One, learn a new skill, such as playing an instrument, sewing, or doing a sport. Keep a notebook when you read and write down one unfamiliar word and then look up the definition and try to use that word at least five times the next day. Learn a new language, as Vlad was talking about before. Uh, do activities with your non-dominant hand, including writing, eating, or brushing your teeth. Be social, just simply be with others, like, like playing a team sport. Uh, doing meditation or calming things to relieve stress and anxiety. Play games, do jigsaw puzzles or cards. A dance, especially ones with moves that you need to learn. Listen to upbeat music, take a different route to your destination, or even use a different form of transportation. Use your senses by trying to do a safe activity with your eyes closed, or keep a journal. Try to make it a goal to at least do one of these activities on a daily basis in order to decrease your chances of getting Alzheimer's. Because the sad truth is, we don't have a cure. On November 3rd, 1906, Alosis Alzheimer reported the first case of what we know today as the Alzheimer's disease. That was 115 years ago. And although science has greatly advanced and more cures for the other diseases have been developed, it's awful to say that we still can't help today's Alzheimer's patients any more than he could for his patient many years ago. Out of the top 10 causes of death worldwide, Alzheimer's is the only one that we still cannot prevent, cure, or even slow down. The reason for this being is that we just don't put as much time into researching Alzheimer's as other diseases. The US government spends 10 times as much on cancer as they do Alzheimer's, even though Alzheimer's costs us more and causes a similar number of deaths. This is due to the lack of awareness. So here's a fact that many people don't know, but everyone should. Right now, 44 million people worldwide suffer from Alzheimer's. By 2050, Alzheimer's is expected to affect 150 million people. Meaning if you live to be 85 or older, I hate to say it, but your chances of getting Alzheimer's are almost one in two. That means many of us, if not all of us, will either spend part of our lives either suffering from Alzheimer's or caring for a friend or loved one who is suffering from Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a disease. No matter your gender, your race, or where you live, everyone and anyone who has a brain is at risk of getting the disease. 
but we can cure it, except that is only if we realize, and put into perspective, the amount of urgency and effort we need to put into its research. Therefore, we need to build awareness and be a voice for those 44 million suffering who can't create the change that they need to save themselves. Help not only speak up for them, but for your future selves. Thank you.